Yeah. Hey, y'all, Coach in the Fire, you guys. Thanks, baby. Shalom. And so we're looking at the comments from the last video where we asked people to give suggestions for what we were talking about in future classes. And one person said, construction of the iron rod. They must got bad kids. You think that's what you're talking about? <laughs> No, um, spare the rods for the kid. Mm, construction. You talking about the iron rod? You know what the iron rod is? Mm -mm. You know what the iron rod is? Let me go to first here and let's look up the iron rod. We're gonna go to the King James version, and we're gonna do a search for iron. Right. I don't know if there was any iron rods in the Old Testament. But there are exactly four iron rods. There's one in Psalms. And there are three in Revelations. Okay. Uh, let's cover them all. Read the one in Psalms. Oh, okay. Psalms 2 and 4. Psalms 2 and 9. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. I'm going to have to click on that one to see what is he even talking about. This is talking about uh, giving the heathen over to you, giving uh, them as part of your inheritance. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's part of the uh, end times prophecies that say that we go are going to have them as our servants, whereas before we were their servants, even now we're their servants. But in after the tribulation, they're supposed to be plowing our fields for us now. Yeah, you've always said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look forward to that day. But the next verse that we're looking at is uh, Revelation chapter 2. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Is this talking about the heathen as well? Oh, no. This is actually talking about something totally different. But it's surprising that it almost says the same thing. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Once again, it's talking about um, the potter's vessel and um, breaking them into pieces. But this is actually talking about the or talking to the church of Thyatira. This is um, Revelation chapter two, where you hear about the seven churches. Mm -hmm. So this one says, and unto the angel of the church of Thyatira. And this is what is known as the lax church. Thyatira is the lax church. Okay. This is the church that you hear about Jezebel actually down there in verse 20. Right. Right. And you remember that she was um, causing her uh, people to uh, uh, commit fornications mm -hmm. like you read about in, in uh, eat food, sacrifice to idols. You read there in verse 20. And then so it goes on to say down here that for he who overcomes, he will give them a rod of iron. Who overcomes the spirit of Jezebel? Or who overcomes um, not being lax anymore? Well, it's not necessarily overcoming Jezebel as so much as overcoming his own faults. And his his fault is, is that he's lax. Okay. He's uh, um, allowing things to go on like it says here. He, it's like he's allowing her to um, do these things that's being talked about. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the commenter is talking about when it says the construction of this rod of iron. Mm -hmm. Because you can imagine when you first start off in a relationship or like us, when we were living kind of a Babylonian lifestyle and we started to make the transition over, one of the first things we had to do was stop with the idolatry and stop with the pagan holidays and, you know, stop with all of that kind of stuff. And you can imagine how much work it took. Mm -hmm. Now, if, you know, you had been by yourself, you know, it would have been up to you. But this is a family of six, at least, you know, you know, start counting, you know, all of the children. We get up to about 15 people that we're talking about moving in this direction. And so, you know, construction is a word. He always chose construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So what he's asking for is, I guess, information how or what it takes to actually get to the point where this no longer occurs in your household. Right. Yeah. What it takes to get there. You know, so maybe maybe we ought to start to work on a class on that. Right. Looks like it'll be in this chapter um, to me to come out of this chapter here. But let's look at the other verses before we close out. Revelations 12 and 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now we've done classes on this. This is talking about uh, the birth of uh, this child who turns out to be us, mm -hmm. spiritual Israel. We are this child. But notice that we have this rod of iron. Mm -hmm. This is necessary to get away from all of this stuff that we were talking about back there in chapter two. If we want to transition, if we want to live through, you know, this transition and make it to the other side, mm -hmm. you know, those who will be slow to um, put away this, I'm going to say Jezebel spirit out of the household aren't going to, they're going to, they're going to have a hard time making it if they do. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the last verse say? Um, the last one is Revelations 19 and 15, and it says, And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So, you know, it's all going back to this, this um, that what we read in, in chapter 2, you mm -hmm. know. Um, this is saying that it's our Messiah too will have this rod of iron. Right. Right. So this is an important big deal. So we'll we'll do more classes on it. You know, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, look forward to that. Y'all hit subscribe um, so you can see when we put that class out. Um, and in the meantime, I'll see you in the comment section. Shalom.